Sorry, it's a little bit late start this morning. I was selfish. I ate breakfast. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Um, but the point of this is to, uh, we should have some folks joining in here shortly, uh, is to answer your questions about uh, anything Office 365, Microsoft 365 related. And uh, <clears throat> we'll go from there. So uh, if you have questions, we're live streaming in a couple different locations. Uh, we're waiting pending approval uh, out on the Microsoft 365 community. But this is all about uh, ask me anything, AMA format, post your questions, and we'll uh, do our best to go through and review them. Um, one of the questions, one of the things that's talked about uh, most frequently right now, uh, for some reason, is the status of the Brady Bunch feature um, within Teams. And so that three by three format. And the latest over the weekend, and hey, the mic is joining. Um, good morning. The, the latest, I've just uh, I've done some posted questions over on the uh, community page. And uh, the popular question out there is what's the status of the Brady Bunch boxes in Teams, the yeah. three by three? Yeah. And uh, Jeff Teeper just responded to something on Twitter, I think, I think it was Twitter over the weekend or, or LinkedIn. It's one of the problems now with all these various communication tools. I don't remember where I read it, just that Jeff Tieper, um answered that question that uh, you know, we're, we're probably, you know, it's in testing now, and once it hits that kind of quality standard, then they'll push it out to tenants. So <laughs> I believe he indicated it's in the, happening over the next two weeks, so it should be up pretty quickly. Part of the question, though, was whether uh, Microsoft was going to add more than just the nine, and they said that, which I think makes perfect sense. This is we're going to continue to look at the data and look at different options and how we might do that, and if it makes sense to do more. Um, but that is something that they're still thinking about, talking about for the future. Yeah, it, uh, it actually has got accelerated. Because I remember asking that question back in, gosh, that was uh, right before our summit. Uh, because they were talking about, wasn't well, we found out we were using Teams and we knew the limitation. And uh, we were asking that question. They said, well, it's getting accelerated, obviously. So it was on the roadmap for later. But I, I don't think they're going to hit, like, what, what can you do in, like, Zoom now? Like, 32 screens or something? I, I don't think that makes any sense. I mean, it's nice, uh, I, that one-off, having that. But, I mean, honestly, it just doesn't make sense. I would love to have more of a curated experience. If I've got 30 people in a collaborative environment, but I might want to pin six yeah. people's images, and I could swap them out as the organizer, the producer of that event. Um, so more akin to what you can do with the team's live capability. Yeah. Um, I, I can understand that. Yeah. That makes, that makes much more sense. It does. Yeah. The other, to, oh, go ahead. I know. I just have to comment. I love the shirt, man. Oh yeah. This is that's, the, uh, that's well, awesome. I'm surprised Sean isn't here cause he and I were talking about the t-shirts. So this is my, I went and bought like a series of $6 t-shirts and this is one of them. <laughs> I have to say that my favorite one is the picture of the crocodile and it just says a uh, murder log. <laughs> 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 you know, my, my wife who doesn't like to stand next to me, be around me in public when I'm wearing graphic tees. Um, I don't know that guy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That guy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's just funny. Just uh, I have a closet full of, collared shirts that were my like travel my business conference where you know when i'm in front of clients and people that i don't look like i rolled out of bed because i you know literally rolled out of bed and threw on a t-shirt but most of the time you do <laughs> right but that's the that's the uh i guess the plus side to uh working from home i always <laughs> said when i was young i said my philosophy was because I, I i'm a jeans where and I own other pants. I hate to wear them. I own a couple suits. I rarely wear them. You see me in a suit, it's because I'm on my way to church. But it's, 
but even then I, I, I try to, uh, to, to not wear the suits, <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> my philosophy as a teenager, I think it was about 15 when I said, um, I have to be able to climb a tree at a moment's notice. So whatever I'm wearing, you know, can I climb a tree in it? If I'm, if it's would be uncomfortable, I'd be unable to climb a tree. I will not wear that. Interesting. So why, why do I need to climb a tree? I like, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> An injured bear that can't climb. I have to escape it. I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, Mike, any, any other questions uh, pop up this past week that uh, you'd like to talk about anything in your world? Uh, no, actually, uh, my world has been really focused on, <laughs> believe it or not, something that uh, I'm not I'm not overly excited about. Um, you know, I've been focused on SQL. Uh, so it's kind of learning new things about that. And, yeah, it's not my first choice. But, you know. <laughs> it's the stuff that gets the bills. Yeah, I'm not a database guy. So it's like, uh, you know, trying to teach someone uh, – you know, how to be a, D a DBA when they're not a DBA, but that's all right. Yeah. You know, what's funny is I, I, I made this observation uh, years ago and it was, uh, I think I first said this when I was at Microsoft. So 2006 to 2009 about how DBAs in the Microsoft world don't really exist. Not like they, they do um, outside of the Microsoft ecosystem. I don't know. I just, I came from and worked in telecom for a number of years and so it's kind of like I was at Pacific Bell. I was there in the same building at the same time when Scott Adams was still in the building. He was oh, three, three floors below me in uh, uh, at, at the, uh, uh, the the Death Star the uh, off Bollinger Canyon in, in San Ramon, California, if anybody knows that area. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, oh, uh, hang on. Uh, just got another notice. Um, yeah, but the, when he talked about uh, everything is database driven, you know. Um, well, that's when I got a lot of folks that were like access, you know, when you, access was like made everything easy. You right. know, I had access I could do inside and out, upside and down. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's really easy to create forms in there. It's easy to create queries. It's really easy. But when you start getting into the guts of SQL, it gets a little scary, uh, right. and you know, so it's a learning experience, you know, something new, some going out, having fun. So I'm looking at, it looks like, uh, see, do, 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 do. I just got a message from Brad. I know they've changed things up. Um, so the, the watch party, what's going on? Sorry, I don't know if there's uh while I'm handling this technical issue, if there's anything you can talk about, Mike. <laughs> sure, I didn't know you were having a technical issue, but that's uh, it. well, it's uh, <laughs> trying to uh, uh, share this out on. They've renamed the Office 365 community. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah. so things got kind of switched up. So uh, yeah, hang on. Yeah, so um, one of the things that uh, um, I've noticed, and we had a couple calls last week about, was around. Um, again, everybody's talking about the working from home and what they're doing and things like that. But uh, there's been a lot of, you know, folks that have been investing in their home tech during this time. They really kind of put some money into it. And I'm no, I'm no different. I mean, um, we were talking about all this different stuff. I mean, everything's out of stock. You know, they're talking about green screens and, and lighting and all this other stuff because everybody's going video crazy. And uh, I bought, I got myself a little like an Elgato Stream Deck here, you know, so I can control everything right from the Stream Deck, and you know, a nice LED light above me and all that. So it's just, it's it, to me, it's kind of interesting that some folks were like, well, you know, I'm only going to be here for three or four months, um, but yet they're investing all this money into you know, creating the visuals uh, because they feel that it's going to some, be something that, even though they're going to be home for three or four months, they're they're trying to get they're trying to get to the point where they'd be able to do this work from home more than, you know, actually going into the office. So I, no, I just heard on the radio this morning as I was out walking the dogs, it's one of my favorite programs for those that uh, uh, know them, Armstrong and Getty that are out of the, uh, out of Northern California, but they're like all, all over the, the nation now. But um, 
in fact, I, they're on a local station here in the Utah area, but I've never listened to them on that because I listen through the uh, iHeartRadio app. But oh. uh, I, I, they're, they're hilarious. They're wicked smart. They're very libertarian, so they're very in the middle, yelling at both sides on the political stuff, but do a lot of the pop culture stuff, just the pointing out stupid things said by stupid people kind of thing and mm-hmm. poking fun of it and you know, really funny. But they were talking about how – um, one of the problems they have with um, there's a lot of teachers that are out there that, that basically held up on doing the online says, well, cause if not every kid has all the same technology, oh, yeah. Yeah. doesn't have access. Therefore we're not going to even start our programs until everybody has, uh, you know, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a laptop and has, high speed internet and just ridiculous stuff. Well, and so there's some school systems that are just now slowly getting online with things. And they're saying, you know, what's amazing is that, you know, 25 years ago when hardly anybody had the internet, there were outages, obviously not for this long, but away from school, but they would do crazy things like sending packets with homework programs through the mail. And, uh, calling people on the telephone and talking to them about it. It's like, why do you have to see the, they're talking about how in a lot of families that have a single computer that uh, where somebody's trying to work on it while kids are wanting to do school, but they're like, no, we must be in a zoom session. A, we must be in a live video um, and, and see their, all of their faces in my class for us to proceed versus an asynchronous collaboration model. I think some of the learnings from this, I, I mean, I, I would love to see every household in the U.S. have a computer that's that's yeah. modern and uh, have yeah. internet access and be able to get access to all of this. But do you have to have 100% compliance to that to be able to move things forward and hold the people that have that back? No, I, I mean, you, you start looking at, you know, even in rural areas, you know, uh, working with uh, one gentleman who went up uh, went up to his cottage and he uses uh, you know uh, satellite internet it's just terrible I mean there's no there's no way you can actually function in a classroom type setting with that type of broadband and stuff but that's all infrastructure and and things like that um, I don't know I, to, to me to me it's just you know the world is slowly getting there. And for folks that look back and say, well, remember the way we used to do things. I mean, in my opinion, we're not in that world anymore. You know, we got thrust into this thing a month ago. Uh, well, now what, six weeks ago or whatever. Um, and uh, we're just, we're not in that world anymore. And people have to, <laughs> have to start adapting a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, well, it's going to be interesting. Well, it's, it, I mean, the, the, so for, for having been in the collaboration technology space for, uh, you know, a, a two thirds of my career, I know was in largely the project management technology space prior to that. Yeah. Um, so it's been in knowledge and information management systems, my entire 30 year career. It's kind of exciting to see, um, you know, that, you know, as much as we do see, um, uh, you know, that the, the the rise of this kind of technology. And, and so oh, yeah. it doesn't, it didn't surprise me that like Microsoft's numbers were double digit growth this last quarter. Well, you know, <laughs> with so much of their, you know, divested interest spread across, you know, different areas, but more and more towards the cloud. I mean, it's, so they got it's hit though. They, I mean, they got hit with the whole capacity thing too. We can't forget that. Right. Because I don't, I don't think they, anybody could have estimated the amount of capacity that was going to get used up, especially in the, across the pond in the, the European region where they got hit pretty hard. Yep. Uh, I, I personally think one thing that I, I thought of the other day was there are a lot of, co- I shouldn't say there are a lot. There are, there are companies that are stepping up and they're allowing things to get used, um, you know, for 30, 60, 90 days, sometimes, you know, through the end of the year of 2020 uh, for free, you know, instead of having people pay for that. Um, there are some companies that are just using it as, and, and I'll, I'm, my opinion, and I'm, I'm being honest, is um, there are some companies I think that are just using it as bait to get people to buy their product at a later time. Uh, but what I didn't see is I haven't seen Microsoft step up and say, you know what, 
uh, we're going to make Office 365 free. Uh, we're going to give you a free subscription for three months, for 90 days, or until this mess is over, so you can collaborate. I understand they made Teams free, but at the same time, why didn't they allow the entire collaboration suite? You know, why didn't they just say, okay, even, even if it was just to EDUs, you know, to students in EDUs and saying, hey, we want to give them, you know, we're going to let you use this thing. And sure, the subscription will run out, you know, when the new school year starts or whatever. But to, to, to provide a platform um, that people wouldn't have to hurry, you know, run out like, you know, hey, I got to go buy three more computers because my three kids need them and they're all working from home or they're all in homeschool. And they have to buy office licenses for all three of those. It yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So I, 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 I'm a little disappointed in that. And I think there are other companies that also, you know, really haven't kind of stepped up in that area. But, um, you know, I, I don't know. It, to me, it would just make sense. And it would be good faith for them. Yeah. That, you know, what you, you, what you're talking about, too, is, that, you know, what is it, the, the home edition of Office 365? It's what? It's 100 bucks. 100 bucks a year. And that you get five devices. Well, now it's now it's six or is it six? have they increased that? Yeah. Well, there you go. I need to be subletting that other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's uh, you know, so it's relatively inexpensive to go. I, I mean, I get your point. I, I think it would be fantastic if they would do something like that. And I certainly, I know that there's a lot of you know programs out there. There's, I'm sure there's there's well discounted versions of that through different programs even if they release something like that through partners entirely and let them go and kind of gate that you know deployment versus just have it out there free and available for everybody um, yeah i just know i just know some some friends of my son um are saying and to be honest with you they just don't they couldn't afford that hundred dollars a year yeah. because right now they're both both their parents lost their jobs you know um and they were you know it's it's, it's hard work for some folks right now. It's really, it, even with the stimulus, you know, checks or whatever is happening, um, it's hard for some folks even to afford that. Did they spend a hundred bucks on that or do they spend a hundred bucks on food? I don't know. Right. Well, you know, there, here it seems like there's a great opportunity to let the free market kind of drive it to start a, a charity where people can donate to buy those licenses and, and give them out. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's something like that that exists but I think that would be a fantastic thing. Maybe, maybe uh, Mark Jones and the Collab 365 team uh, might put something like that together where people could donate to buy <laughs> families in need uh, Office 365 home licenses. I'm just saying. Just saying. No, no pressure. I just think that if they didn't do it, they just, it'd be just incredibly you know, lazy. And um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah. So, uh, so as far as other common questions, um, so I've got actually a blog post going live today where I'm going through and, uh, well, it's been drafted like two weeks ago. And so I'll, I'll finish, I'll publish it. Uh, but was one of the, uh, favorites from the latest productivity tips webinar that I do with Tom Duff. Um, which is the uh, be, becoming the master of your domain of your screen space. Ah. And, uh, and so there's three tools which I highlight within the, well, there's two blog posts because I have a separate one for the third item, but really kind of the, 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 uh, the triple features there. So the, I'm the, the king of the alt tab which everybody knows toggle between your various applications that you have open on your desktop using alt tab. And so it's like driving a stick. I don't even notice it. Um, I just, you know, switch between, and, you know, it's just, a, it was, I'm, I was, I'm working throughout the day and can't find that. And I'll just be, you know, that I'll be looking over on another screen, the right hand with the mouse will be doing stuff and the toggling will be happening on the left. And I wasn't even aware like, Oh, I've, I've switched. Um, so that, that's the first one. The second one is the Windows key and the arrows. The, uh, and so splitting, the, it's a screen split. And so that's something that I uh, use. And I, I didn't realize that you could do this, but you could actually um, divide even top bottom on a, a monitor on that, that split. So, um, so you can go in, if you don't know what I'm talking about. So I have this extra wide monitor here. 
So this extra wide monitor, the, here's a normal monitor like right here. Uh, and so I can have two full browser windows open or applications open in this with full fidelity. Um, but sometimes you know, I want to have more space or not. I can you know, hit the window key, the arrow key, and it will, whatever the primary uh, uh, workload that I'm working in, so the browser or in OneNote or uh, SharePoint in a browser, whatever it is, it'll, it'll split that open. And then you'll get that little, cl the cloud of the other applications that are open, and you can then select that, that screen and split the screen. Um, in fact, you know, I can show you. The beauty of screen sharing. you the world. La, 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 la. Okay, sorry. Let me share my other screen. Uh, all right. All right, so if you see that. So here I am, I've got just two browsers open. But So what I'm going to do is, uh, so I'm, I'm in this primary window that's open here. I'm in a Windows key left arrow. So it will automatically pull to the left side of the screen. And over on the right side, so you have the options of everything else that I have open that I could split between. And so sometimes I'll have like, uh, you know, it's a good one to have open on the second screen. My Spotify view. I might open this up so that we're not in it. Um, so I'm looking at, I'm looking at um, WebCon's website there. Um, but it's a great way to, again, to, to maximize your workspace and and have multiple things open. And then you can also go in and say, well, you know what? I need more room for uh, navigating music. So sorry, WebCon website. Um, drag that over. And why did that? It should move this whole thing. Let me try this again. Must have grabbed the wrong bar. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh. The left side there. So as you drag, no, oh, there's some, something off. I must be clicking on something else. But anyway, um, it, maybe it's in the primary screen where it does this. But uh, the, but you know, typically what happens, of course, it's not showing what is, you grab this bar and it will minimize the, the, on the right side while I'm, you know, maximizing the webcon page there, the blog. Uh, and so you drag a drop between those things. But what's cool about this is here's what I, let me try this again. Okay, here we go. So there's between, now I should be able to grab this and What's going on? Is it because there's something open below above it? Let me try this one more time. Demos are fantastic. Even unprepared demos, they're better. Yeah. <laughs> the, best, the best, Jerry, the best. Uh, all right. One more time. There we go. There it is. There's nothing open behind him. So I should be able to grab this and slide. No! What's going on? So yeah. anyway... In a perfect world, it should slide both of these at the same time and move them. Uh, and then the other thing I, I tried, so I could actually hit like the down arrow. I put that in the bottom. Hey, I want to have this open, you know, up towards the top. There it is, and and fill, you know, the the spaces there. So you can actually. And what's nice about this, I'm going to stop sharing now with my ad hoc demo there. Um, What's nice about that is uh, even with the two monitors is moving over to the other monitor and setting that up. So that's something that I'm doing quite frequently. And then the third thing, um, oh, we've got Hal joining. Let me, let me promote him over. Uh, the, the third thing is the Windows timeline, which is just another fantastic feature. Uh, um, good morning, Hal. Good morning. Uh, for information on how to do that. All right, or, or where the UML diagrams are for that. So this just kind of uh, you hear me? through the process. Uh, yeah, we could also, we could hear some other audio bleeding through. Um, oh, Mr. sorry, let me turn that down. The, the notes under the slide for this. That, that's Mr. Andrew Connell. Yeah, we don't want to hear any of him. That explains it out <laughs> in detail. Yeah, you can still hear it pretty strong. So how do you go about uh, hold on. Damon Apps to call security? I'm going to yeah. mute you. There we go, while you figure that out. Um, yeah, the third thing is the Windows timeline. And uh, if you're not familiar with this, maybe I, I can do this. Hang on. Uh, I'm gonna this one, this one should work. This would be easy. Yeah, you, you would think. So, you would think. Yeah. 
Share my screen. All right. So here in the Windows timeline, so it's this little thing right down here, right by the little um, talk to Cortana button. And you click on that task view. And basically, it opens up, and you've got the slider over on the right side. And it allows you to scroll down through days, you know, uh, the, the last couple weeks of everything you had open that you were working on. So if you, you come in Monday morning and say, darn it, what was I working on on Friday? And so you're able to go in and, uh, and you know, click on that and just jump right back into that application. Uh, and so this is a, you know, for example, hey, here is this, I did this image over in, in Paint for the webinar that John did. And so opens it right back up. That's it. So those three features, the Alt tab, the uh, uh, Windows arrow for uh, splitting your screen, and the Windows timeline um, with those three powers, um, kind of like in Harry Potter and uh, the Deathly Hallows. There's three of them, and you can be the uh, master of your own desktop. You are, you are stretching that so far. I mean, you just. Uh, what are you talking I, about? <laughs> I don't think that would ever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the timeline thing was actually, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, timeline thing was only available, like, that wasn't even available in, in 8.1. I think that, that is a, t a 10 feature, right? Because you used to be able to bring up the taskbar, um, but it would not show you the entire timeline. It would just show the windows. Right. Yeah. All right, Hal, we've got your volume back. Well, hopefully. Yeah, there we are. How's it going this morning? Oh, so far, so good. Typical Monday, I guess. You can't um, sigh like that and have us believe you that everything is okay. <laughs> well, I actually made it here before the thing was over. I'm, I'm not complaining. Yeah. Uh, That's honestly, great. Trouble with Mondays is that, that uh, being retired now, I tend to oversleep. I don't want to get up to like 7.30 in the morning, and that's... <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So that leaves me that leaves me like a half an hour to get the cats fed, get the dishes washed, uh, get the computer turned on and everything, get a cup of coffee made. You know, it's hi. <laughs> I'm here. I, I uh I, so I've been going to sleep, you know, because time doesn't matter anymore. So I was up working last night. I probably went to sleep at two AM, which is about about normal now. And yet I'm still up at between six thirty and seven AM. You're younger. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it's a. It's not caffeine. I'm really got that controlled, especially. It's like I, I don't need an afternoon headache. Um, but uh, yeah. So anyway, good times. I've actually I've actually joined some uh, some virtual sessions now that are like eight or nine o'clock at night because of the time difference. So there's a session going on over in the Netherlands. And, uh, you know, I'll jump on for, or, for APAC or uh, over there. And that's, you know, eight or nine o'clock at night. Um, you know, it, it just, everything's kind of, kind of gone topsy turvy. So, yep. Well, uh, how, I, wanted, yeah. oh. I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you about a feature that we're talking about, you know, you're talking about the timeline and stuff. One of the things I want to ask you is, is, is any of you ever really used a sandbox in Windows 10? Either, no? Okay. No. So if, you, if you're not familiar with it, Windows 10 comes with a sandbox, which allows you to run another instance of Windows 10, but it's a throwaway instance. So in, natively in Windows 10, you can spark up, a, you know, click on Windows Sandbox, it'll spin up a, a Windows 10 image. It's a very basic image. Are you going to give us an ad hoc demo, Mike? Are you, you can gonna... do whatever you want. Oh, gosh, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. Because really, I mean, all you're doing is you're, you're just, it, I, it's just ex explanatory. It just spins up a Windows 10 image. It's a virtual image. And the thing about it is, is that everything that you do inside of there, um, it, when you close it or your machine, you know, reboots, um, it goes away. So when you spin it up again, it's fresh. It's a brand new image again. Hmm. And it takes it directly off the Windows 10, 10 uh, WIM file, which is a copy to your machine when you install Windows 10. Um, and it just, you know, boom, spins it up, throws it away, spins it up, throws it away, spins it up. To, and I, I, I've got some people that have been do, doing testing. I actually opened an email in there because 
you know, how fishing works and everything else. So I actually opened up the sandbox, went to uh, get my mail, uh, which wasn't through Outlook.com, it was through another service. I downloaded the attachment, you know, looked at it inside of that sandbox just because it was it was something that was a phishing attempt and it redirected me to a site over in in uh, China or someplace like that. And uh, it was interesting because it never touches your machine. It, it can't access anything on your machine except, you know, uh, you can even tell it not to access your network resources. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's really kind of cool if you've if you never you've tried it out or used it. No, I guess it, so. The the uh, theory is if you're taking, uh, if you're practicing risky behavior and downloading strange executables, uh, things that you want to try out, see how it's going to work. You know, the yeah. provide environment. I mean, that's where. I mean, for for again, those uh, it, from the SharePoint world. I mean, that that whole you know SharePoint sandbox that concept came from um, the product team. That was back when I was part of MMS and BPOS. Um, just because we wanted exactly that. We just saw that with, especially with migrations, that we'd see people that deploying solutions that would bring down the entire system, just breaking everything. And we, and we so remember sitting in that meeting, um, I'm sure there are many discussions around it, where we said, what we need is a, like a, like a, a safe, like a sandbox that we could play in. Right. Uh, you know, and uh, so I, I'm trying to think if that was the, like Are you Kurt, seeing my screen there? Kurt Delbini meeting. Yeah. Yep. Can see that. So you just, you know, starting on the Windows icon, just type sandbox. And the Windows sandbox app will come up. Um, let me close this. Basically, this is what it looks like. And it's built, it spins up a Windows 10 image. And that's right now, I mean, you can do, it's got edge in here. You can uh, do whatever you want inside of it. Um, and then once you spin it down, it's gone. I, I can create a text file here uh, you know, if I wanted to. New text document. Uh, and if I were just to close this, uh, or I don't know if they offer a... That's the exciting thing about uh, an ad hoc demo. Yeah. Mike created the text <laughs> file. <laughs> yeah, and notice it, it uses a WDAG utility account as its login. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so if I close that, are you sure you want to close? Once Sandbox is closed, all of its content will be discarded and permanently lost. So then you bring up Sandbox again. There it is. And you can bring up multiples. Hmm. You know, so. Oh, what version of Windows is that? There is, a way, there is a way to bring up multiples. I know that. I think you have to do a reg edit, but you can do multiples. I'm sorry, how old was the question? That isn't straight 1909, is it? This is, yeah, this is, well, I'm on, I'm on Insider. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm on 613, yeah. Yeah, so that's not something that a stock Windows 10 user would have. This was actually in 1809, I thought. I thought it was actually introduced in 1809. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Uh, I don't see it in my system at all. No? Is it an actual feature you have to install? I should check that. Uh, yes. Sure enough, Windows Sandbox, you have to check it. Oh, Windows Features. Cool. That's where I was, uh, I'm not seeing it. Um, Under the that's Windows where, features. So I did a search and it took me to Windows Features, uh, but I don't see it in the drop-down list. What version are you on? Oh, you're making me look now. It might okay, be a pro. It might, might be a pro home. feature too if you're on pro, if you're on home. Mm. 
Oh, and Rusty Brown is saying, you think you have to be on W10 Enterprise. I don't have Enterprise. This is, this is pro. Um, and I can prove that. Um, yeah, I'm on Windows 10 Pro. So I think you have to be on Pro or Enterprise. Yeah, I'm on yeah, Windows a reboot home. once you get the feature added. Yeah. You're on home, Christian? Yeah. So I just thought that was interesting. I mean, you know, it's, it's something that uh, some folks play with, and I found out about it just by, you know, investigating how I could open up this, uh, this attachment I got without messing up my machine. That's very cool. Learn something new every day. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the point of this, right? <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah, so if there's anybody that's watching on the uh, live streams, we've got a handful of people in a couple locations. Let me check. It's closed. Second browser down. Let me open it up, see if there's any other questions posted. Um, nothing so far. Um, hang on, I'm going to look at some of the questions coming coming down through here. Um, oh, one thing I'll do since we're uh, we're hosted out there on the Microsoft 365 community, formerly known as the Office 365 community. Um, of course, we've got Global Con two that's coming up the in early June. It's free to attend. Um, you know, so go, definitely go and take a look at that. Um, if you do a search for, um, like where is the link to this? Build is free now. And build is free. Yeah, I'm registered for that. It's my, I'm telling you, it'll folks be that have never been to build, and yeah. maybe not, you don't have to be a developer. And it's, you know, uh, I, I've been to build once, and I wish I could go, I would, would have went back, but now it's free. It's going to be open to everybody, so. Yeah, maybe you should uh, share out the link to that as well. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen the link to build. I'm going to have to go get registered for that one myself. Yeah, I think you can just go to build.microsoft.com and, and you can register right there. Yeah, so I'll share a link to the GlobalCon. If you're not yet registered for that, definitely go and, and Want that one. register for that, that event. And then... Um, one of you share the, uh, the link for build registration. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe verify is build at microsoft.com. I think it is. Oh, I'm sorry. It's my build. All right. My build. There you go. Oh, that goes to panelists. You have to say which day, everybody. There we go. Yeah. So right now it's Rusty. Rusty needs that link. I'm, yeah. Rusty probably has that link. <laughs> yeah, that's coming up. What's the dates for build? I don't have the page open. Uh, May 21st, is it? Yeah, so it's... 20-something. I know what the... the so I've not, never attended. I've, I've been there twice uh, as, as an MVP and RD, so I've been part of the pre-day activities. I had other business in town while Build was going on and visited my sister and, who lives up, uh, uh, up uh, in Bothell area. Um, and... Uh, uh, you know, participated in the uh, breakfast meetings and worked there from a hotel next door. Um, and it was great to have, uh, then we had, you know, senior Microsoft leaders come in and speak to us at lunch. And uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of, a, it's kind of evolved. I mean, it used to be a lot of, and obviously it's a lot of development, right? It's all around the, the, the development, the core development products of Microsoft. Um, and the services. Now everything's kind of shifted into the DevOps, obviously, into, you know, cloud native and all that kind of fun stuff, but there's still a groundwork for um, the original coding that, you know, but <clears throat> also there's so many languages now. 
I mean, if you think about it, there's so many different languages and libraries and frameworks, you know, from, you know, Go and Ruby and uh, now, uh, uh, what's the new uh, new one? Gravel and, and Link and, you know, all these other ones. Um, and they have sessions on all this kind of stuff and how it integrates with the DevOps ecosystem. Yep. So, uh, <clears throat> but it also gets back to some of the core stuff that, that I work with a lot around PowerShell, around uh, Windows Terminal, around uh, the WSL, the Windows system for, uh, subsystem for Linux and things like that. So uh, not only, you know, if you're not a, if you're not a, a coder, it's okay. Um, just, you know, pick some sessions that, you know, you might be interested in. Um, and that's the beauty of being free and online. You can just pick and choose. You don't have to, you know, pay, what is it, like $2,000 or something and travel there and go there and go to mm -hmm. sessions that you probably wouldn't learn much from. Um, but now you can pick and choose. Uh, so it's, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, this is a question about whether uh, we will forever change the you know, the, the kind of the conference uh, uh, you know, value proposition. If, if you have some events, and I know it's been talked about, some events that have, will uh, maintain their online portion. I mean, it's, we've had through Ignite, for example, we've had the, the, the real-time live keynotes. We've had that with your SharePoint conference. We have that with a number of events. So they'll, they'll live stream kind of those day one activities. Uh, and, and Ignite has even extended that and had across you know multiple events, and there will even be some speakers that will live stream their sessions and and have permission to go and do that. I mean, certainly there's more value uh, to a conference than just the content, the sessions themselves. And I would argue that a, an event like in, Inspire, this would have been my 11th year uh, in a row of attending Inspire, and it's my for sales and marketing people. Um, you know, I'm a, a technical marketing guy, but that was my event and my biggest event uh, of, of the year. And so I, I pull client deals down through that. And so there's talk now about, well, we're going to have like a, an online version of Inspire. And in fact, there was just a blog post out by uh, uh, Channel Chief uh, Gabriella Schuster uh, a couple days ago uh, talking about it. But how are they going to do the connect discussions. I can't just go up and talk to vendors and partners. I can't go and schedule those meetings the same way. Not it's unless they do the virtual communities. I mean, th that's one of the things that some folks are coming out with now is the ability to do the virtual meetups and have the, the 3D where you're walking through a hall, you know, <laughs> yeah. and you can see the vendors. And, 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 and there are other 2D versions of that. There was a, somebody was sharing a link uh, to a, a vendor, for example, that had these these tables in a giant yep. conference room. You can make that space bigger and bigger, but as you're walking up, they, they limit the number of people that can be at yeah. a table. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and, and, but they have the topic that they're discussing who's participating and a spot opens up and you can sit down and join yep. that conversation. And then it's like six people in a private chat. Yeah. But it's, it's not, you're losing the element of being able to just have hallway conversations and drive right. by and things like that. And I mean, I understand where you're coming from. Um, I think that some companies will maintain the virtual because I know that they hold their own user conferences. And I think that those may continue to be virtual because it's less expensive. If you think about it for companies to do this right now for bigger companies like Microsoft and VMware and Citrix and all these other ones, I, I don't know. I mean, I think they would have a public push to have these in, you know, in person to get these back to an in-person because they're so large. I mean, look at salesforce.com. You get to a Salesforce, there's 140,000 people. You go to AWS. Right. Insane. Yeah, AWS. Have you, guys been to, have you been to an event that big? Yes. Yes, yeah. I have. CES. I've been to CES. Oh, CES that's right. almost, almost 200,000 people. Yeah, I, I, so <laughs> I've been to that one in, over in, uh, what was the, the massive, it's that large uh, in Dubai? Where? Oh, uh, yeah. I, uh, that's, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Right. Yeah, yeah, um, but I was on the Vegas one. That's yeah. the, you know, yeah. So, so I don't know which it's ones. Which ones? The Association of Broadcasters that meets in Las Vegas every April that pulls one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand people every year. Right. Yeah. No, I forgot that I had gone to that that event. So yeah, it was it, it was amazing. It was there uh, in support of Microsoft, and man, they were in the center of this massive 
facility. Yeah. Essentially, some of the vendors, they had mass, huge spaces, and it was basically, they were like um, Radio Shack competitors. And so they set up stores. Sure. And it's it just crazy as you're walking through and you're seeing these, you know, 25 cent diodes and things like, yeah, what are you, what are you doing here? But they yeah. probably did the most business. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they pay a fortune to be there, yeah. you know, and they, that's just it. They don't, they don't want to pay that amount. You know, it saves them money. It's, it's ROI on exactly, you know, setting up a booth, having, you know, some companies that I've worked for spend literally six figures on a booth. I mean, just the actual physical booth and the space that it occupies with the carpeting and the electrical and the monitors and the everything else. I mean, six figures just for that booth, um, you know, and that's a lot of money, but they don't it's want to do that. around the broadcasting conventions. Have you, have you, either of you been to the NIB convention in Las Vegas? No. Ah. Uh. That, uh, if you get the chance, if you're a CES fan, that, that, that's a fun place to go take a look at if you ever get the chance to. Because, I mean, full studios, full cameras, production switching equipment, distribution equipment, transmitting equipment, antennas, lighting, everything, sure, anything, sure. all of it. I mean, it's, sure. it's not just television. It's any kind of stage production of any sort. Yeah, one of the things, though, that it's I wanted to massive. bring up real quick is the cost. Okay, because you mentioned, you know, this collab, the ClabCon, the Global? The uh, GlobalCon. GlobalCon, Global Global Con, I'm sorry. GlobalCon? Yeah. Now, GlobalCon, it's interesting. GlobalCon is a smaller conference. How many people usually? Right now, uh, well, right now, they, I think they've got... Just, um, just uh, a past, uh, past estimate. Don't, don't tell me what the numbers are from now, but I mean like... Yeah, like ten to 12,000. Okay, so when you think about that, is there a justification then to actually, because one thing I noticed is when I went to, the, to that website and I, I said, I want a free ticket. Now it's telling me I have four hours before I can upgrade to a premium ticket and I have to pay X amount of dollars. So hang on a second. You've got a conference that's got ten to 14,000 people and you're still going to make them pay to go to this virtual conference. What are they going to get out of that? Number one, when you have other companies like, you know, that are offering all this for free. I mean, they're not charging. Microsoft isn't going to charge anybody. VMware is not going to charge. Well, we don't know about VMware. Citrus isn't charging anyone. Right. You know. Well, but, they, but, the the glo but global cons, it is. You can attend for free. Go to everything, participate in everything for free. What, the, what the, uh, they are charging for is that um, after the event, um, getting access to all of the content on demand for as long as, you know, you, See, you and that's just it. I mean, all these other conferences are giving their way for free. Well, and, <laughs> and, uh, half or more of the speakers are preparing eBooks and other content, which is exclusive to people around that. That's so that's the value add. I yeah, get, I get that, but that has to be pointed out because some folks are going to be like, why would I even pay for a conference right. anymore? And well, that's what the point I'm getting at is, yeah. Yeah. Right. you know, what about the cost of this? Because this costs money to put on, but people are just going to start expecting it to be free. Well, that was kind of my point. I said, if, if you have events like Ignite and Build and Inspire, if they maintain the free portion of that, and yes, there's going to be versions of the interactive, find people, find vendors, find experts, that kind of thing. As we all know, it's, it's not the same as... Mm -hmm you know, walking through the hall and have those conversations. My point was that, uh, you know, here I was going to go to my 11th year of, uh, of Inspire. And other than attending the keynotes where they're making announcements and Inspire, I rarely, if ever, went to any of the content sessions. I mean, I presented at some of them. I've attended in the, when you're standing in a theater session in the expo hall. But, you know, trudging down to a room with 1,500 people in around a specific topic things like I never did that. I spent my time over grilling product team booth people, um, talking with vendors, getting trying to understand the various solutions, or in connect meeting after connect, like this, reserve a table, sit down with people at different, you know, from around the world, meet, talk about your know, products and services and and do deals. And that that's the part where I, I'm I'm just I'm wary of the and any effort to try and do you know, recreate that online. It's just going to be very difficult to do. I, I'm hey, 
I want to see what they come up with for the connect system. A great example is MPM, Microsoft Partner Network, has had the connect tools at almost the 10 years that I've attended. They've had some version that's out there. And every year I go in as I register for that event, I fill out my profile, I make myself searchable in the database. I then start combing through all the people that are registered and they don't make a good distinction between those that were registered in years past that aren't yet registered, that aren't attending this year. But I would then find people and I'm like, you know, hey, would love to connect with your company, learn more, that this is what I do, if you think it makes sense. Like, I've never had any success whatsoever uh, through that tool. And, and it's, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, in a lot of LinkedIn messages where all of the, the people that reach out to connect with me don't look at my profile. Don't look at what I do. They're selling outsourced engineering services or lead gen solutions, and it's spammed through that. And uh, so how are you going to cut through that clutter and yeah. offer something that is going to make up for the, the lack of in-person connections? Anyway, I, I'm interested to see what they come up with. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, I'm not getting down on the charging of the event. I guess what I'm looking at is how people will perceive the value add of paying for an event yep. now if it's virtual, because uh, you know some folks will just be like, "Hey, is it really worth it?" I mean, they don't have to travel; they don't have to make that commitment, right? You know, so is it really worth it? I I don't know. Well, I'm, ho I'm hoping. I mean, that something works out because that's how these companies, you know, make money. I mean, that's right. you, you have to pay. For this hosting, you have to pay for the ability for 10,000 people to come together in a single virtual place. You have to, you know, there's costs involved. So, you know, look, I'll make a prediction uh, that I think that if these conferences offer more in the, by way of content and some connections type stuff yep. going on, that you're going to see a decrease in the numbers of, the, of people physically going to these events. However, I don't think like an event like Inspire will decrease at all. I don't I, think I at all because it's a very different event. Um, build, it, it could impact that. I think there's less of a need. Plus, you're, let's be honest, you're predominantly uh, that conference is attended by introverts. So <laughs> given the option of getting the same content uh, with that crowd, you know, why would you leave the, uh, the security of home? Right. <laughs> you're right. But for, for the rest of us, I think that a lot of other conferences, we're going to see a decreased number. So that, it, but with that, my, my prediction is that the people that do attend will be much more partner collaboration focused because they're not, they're, they're, there's less of a reason to be there for the content. And it's more they're there with intent around connecting with people, meeting and, and doing business. So uh, I, I mean, I could see a, an event like Ignite, the numbers drop down, uh, and yet the people that are there spend less time in sessions and more time in the expo hall. I would agree with that. Yeah. I've been, <laughs> interesting, I've been to, I think, a total of four tech kids, uh, two in the States, two in Europe. And uh, what I did the whole time was I was the blue babe. I was, I was a volunteer. How was and the blue babe? I just, I was a booth babe. I, uh, mostly in the MVP booth, I just stood there with a bright smiley face and said, hi, I'm an MVP. The nice thing about that, and this kind of goes with a lot of what uh, you all have been discussing there, though, that while I never made it to a session, really, I learned an awful lot. You see, the thing is, is the, 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 that MVP booth is just a magnet for everybody. MVPs, speakers, Microsoft people, there was always a Always kind of a lounge area around and so people come and could sit and uh, basically all you had to do is you find the speaker and go up and ask him how'd your session go and you'd get the whole session yeah, yeah. just sit right there one-on-one -on -one. can I just say that let's um for the politically correct folks out there that don't like the phrase booth babe and we all know what you're talking about I'm not beating up on I'm just I'm cutting this off because I will hear from some people around it but right. uh, you know the 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 booth staff side of it. Booth is, representative. I, there you go, a booth engineers. <laughs> um, but it's uh, you know, enough of the. Uh, I've been to plenty of those conferences too, where I've been you know chained to the booth and 
And uh, I think, you know, wow, it's been really kind of limited my, my experience. Now that I've been over the last, you know, 20 years to hundreds of events, um, and I see now more and more that I, I pretty much live in the expo hall at these events anyway. I don't leave. So it, it is some of the best experiences and conversations exactly at those booths. Uh, Definitely. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, and I just got to say, I'm really, I'm really glad that you know, Mister, Mister Sean decided to join us with one minute left, two minutes left in the show. <laughs> May yeah. the fourth be with you guys, Sean. I know Dumpster Fire 2020. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the timing wrong. I was thinking noon, and nope. Yeah. So I had to reboot my system and my Outlook reminder didn't pop up as expected because yeah. Outlook yeah. was not open. It has to be open yeah. to remind me. Yep, there you go. It's the, the downside, so. You missed our demos. Christian and I had yeah, great. Yeah, we, we did demos. Fantastic demos. Yeah, they, really? Yeah, it didn't work out so great. <laughs> oh, come on. They were awesome. That was okay, yeah. yeah. What were you help. attempting to demonstrate? Oh, just I was describing, I was uh, talking about um, – uh, some of the uh, uh, you controlling your workspace, your monitors. Um, I didn't show like the alt tab between, but I just did the screen splitting demo. I mm. showed timeline. Yeah, the screen oh, cool. splitting, it wasn't acting the way that it normally does. I don't know why it didn't do what it was supposed to do, but it mostly worked. Yeah. Well, a sign of a, a true demo. Right. Demo demons come out and you get oh. Shafted. And then as Ted points out, I was also singing some Disney. So, you know, you missed oh. that. I was, uh, I believe that was from Aladdin. I was singing, you know, I can show you the world. Isn't that, that's, that's Aladdin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> as my, two, mm. my two oldest kids came out. Uh, you know, the, they were young when the, the movies came out. So that was uh, one of the movies played four to six times per day. For yeah. Me. At least it's not Frozen. Ugh. I've never never seen Frozen, so oh, oh. you. <laughs> I have no need to, and I have a, a grandson. So by the time I don't have any uh, granddaughters that are going to be, that I'm going to train my grandson to, uh, you know, to to uh, abstain <laughs> from all that. So. Bring the pain. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're we're at the uh, we're out of time here, so really appreciate uh, everyone. I appreciate Sean less because he wasn't here. <laughs> so. My apologies. <laughs> but uh, I'll be we'll around be back, this evening. And we'll be back around this 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 evening at uh, six p.m. Pacific. So that would be what eight for you? Six p.m. Pacific is actually nine. Oh, it's nine for you. Nine hours. p.m. Eastern Standard oh, that's Time. That's right, Eastern. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I like that divider between uh, Central and Eastern. Where is the Cincinnati? Line? It's pretty close to Indianapolis or okay. Indiana, Indiana, Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're really we're up against the west end of the Eastern Standard Time Zone. Okay. All righty then. So we'll see everybody back, and we'll do that with uh, APAC. I'm hoping, ho hopefully, we'll get uh, a couple of our Australian and New Zealand friends on MVPs on and join us and answer some questions from down under. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be great. So, all right. Thank you, gentlemen. Take Thanks. it easy, guys. Talk to, Talk to you later. You bet. Hey, Sean. Hello, sir. It's so frustrating when technology doesn't work work the way we wanted to yeah yeah it's uh yeah i'm sure there's just one toggle somewhere that i've got the wrong setting on and i've i've gone through i mean i've been meticulous going through watching a couple different videos here's how you go and set this up um you know and, and i i think what i need to do is like a you know, get like daryl webster uh on a and do a shared screen and say look here's my settings he's like ah because he'll pick it out he's been playing with this of course i'm talking with other people that are using vmix and some other other one as well so i might i i just i just don't want to go pay for something sure. got obs most stuff is working it's right. uh i already yeah. everybody warned me obs is just a pain in the butt to set up but once you have it it's golden it's fantastic you were most of the way there i say I think so. I mean, it's, it's, here's the, the problem is that it, with teams up, 
um, it's not recognizing my camera on me. Mm. So, I mean, that's a problem, you know? And, and so if I have to add, like I, I could add myself, I don't know if you saw in the screen off to the side, but it won't recognize through teams and do the Brady Bunch thing. Oh, I just, I just want it to do a screen share of all of us on it, but it's because it's using it. And if, if it's for some reason, it's utilizing that, you know, through this separate thing and I have to set up a second camera, I've got another webcam I have, and then I've got my Lumix GH5. And I'm like happy to do that, but it's supposed to work. Sounds like a, an awful lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So hang on. I'm about to I'm set up the live stream here. Let me get Hal on here. He's joining. Hey, Hal. Hey, Hal. So Ooh. hang on. I'm going to uh, set up the live stream here. I'm going to get my office smelling nice. That's good because the, the smell is important to video, to live streaming. Only when you're live streaming. smell o vision <laughs> uh, Okay, going to share that. We're about to go live. So no nudity, Sean. Come on. Sure thing. <laughs> uh, yes, Butt cheeks in the wind. Now we do this. This is the title. Uh, round two. Uh, All right, going live. Oh, it's happening. Oh. <laughs> You know, just this. I I look so red, but part of the problem is I just I'm walking so much outside. Is I'm I'm not burned. It's just bad lighting. <laughs> I don't have anything right on. It's all off to the side. That's part of it. So, well, hey, we're so we're live streaming now. And uh, uh, while I'm uh, getting the rest of this shared out, let me. There it is. Kicking off that other. It's live streaming in two locations on Facebook. Uh, welcome to the second half, the, the the back half of today's episode seven of the Microsoft. Back half. Yeah, the back half. You thought I was going to say something else. <laughs> uh, but this is uh, so early Tuesday morning for our friends around Asia Pacific and uh, welcome. So this is for anybody that's watching this and we, we've got people that uh, in the middle of the night, they're up there, they're working. And so we've had people dial into this thing at, and it's like two to four in the morning, their time. Uh, so bless you for joining. But this is the Ask Me Anything format. So uh, feel free to join us to ask questions. If you have questions around uh, anything Microsoft related, Microsoft products and services, SharePoint, yeah. Teams, Windows, Office products, Azure stuff. We fielded some Azure stuff. Yeah, we've done that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And the, we even get some things right once in a while. Yeah, occasionally. We don't promise that, but no, we definitely attempt. not. Yeah. So, how are things going? Hey, what's uh, looking at your collection on the wall there behind you, Hal? Got some uh, some rifles. Oh yeah, those are just that's some old stuff I've had. The one on the top is a. It's an old Mossberg 22 I've had since I was probably about 11, 12 years old. Oh, wow. Um, the one in the middle isn't even right. It's a, it's a BB gun. It's a, oh, Daisy. Oh, crap. The box is up there, but I can't see it. 922 or something like that. It's a, it's a, it's a, one of the old fashioned pump gun, single shot pump, uh, uh, BB pullet gun. And the one on the bottom is uh, is a couple of years old. It's a Ruger 1022. That one nice. of those things that uh, came out when I was, oh, what? I guess I was, do you think, moving from junior high to high school, something like that? And uh, just something that I've always wanted. And uh, so I got one some, some couple of years back. Well, Hal, I'll be the first to say with that uh, that middle gun, just be careful. You'll shoot your eye out. 
<laughs> Rider. Oh, well. No, well, what I used to do with that is uh, is just just uh, prop up charcoal briquettes on, on top of a box or something like that, and just hmm. shoot them with that and watch the briquettes explode, kind of like a clay yeah. pigeon. What we're doing now is I've, you know, to, I've gone down. There's a shooting range that's down south of uh, Utah Lake, so it takes about 30 minutes to drive down there. And they basically went in with bulldozer and they dug these these channels and it's just dirt and rocks back in there. What I like mm-hmm. to do is stop off at the gas station on the way down and buy a couple six packs of whatever's cheapest, shake them up violently, put them out there. That's about the most fun <laughs> for uh, when you when you've got when I've got like some nephews or some younger <laughs> boys that I you know, that go out with uh, with my boys now that they're older. Um, mm. It's one of the best things to shoot at. Yeah. So good to have. Well, we've got yeah. a couple dozen people watching uh, the live stream in a couple different locations. So again, if uh, if anybody has any questions, um, may the fourth like, be with you. Yes, and that's right. <laughs> oh, jeez, yeah. Uh, I was thinking about that today, tweaking the uh, the Star Wars people. So yeah. I have. Do I? I think I've got some Star Wars stuff up. I guess I should bring it bring it out. Hang on. <laughs> so I have something Star Wars related with me. You know? Nice. I like it. There you put it down below the camera and say, Hello, Chewy. Yeah. Chewy. This thing is Everyone needs a Wookiee. Yeah. I actually really liked the uh, Chewbacca backpacks that have the same kind of fur. One of my kids borrowed it. Haven't seen oh, yeah. it since. So, hmm. But uh, all right. Um, let's see. Anything unanswered from our session this morning? I think we covered most. I'm just looking to see if there's any other comments, questions that uh, were posted. When I dropped in, you guys seemed like you had things well under control. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we we started things off as uh, well, like I, I usually do. We st- started by just kind of fielding questions that were out there. Uh, let me go take a look at the Office three six five community page. Um, and let's see. Uh, do do do. Looking to see if there's any, as per usual, there are questions that are posted to this page, which are you know, like that nine part question we discussed last week. Yeah. Where the, the short answer is hire a consultant. Uh, right. When your question has nine parts. I moved it. Oh, well. Um, do, 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 do. So somebody's asking, I have a question. Is there a difference between using Office 365 online? or have it installed on your computer? So yeah. that's a relatively easy question. Uh, yeah. Well, Office 365 is only online. Um, so that you have the individual, the desktop applications for some of the applications within now micro, rebranded Microsoft 365. So things like you could still download and use locally um, Outlook and Word and Excel, PowerPoint, uh, the Teams has a desktop client, um, but just about everything else, or everything else, is oh accessible God. through the the browser, and they are they live in the cloud. There's a click to run install. Yeah, if you want client components, you can uh, run the executable on your host system. Uh, otherwise, you can make do with the uh, web based applications, yep. which are pretty. F- full featured yep and I, I and somebody did answer um you know uh, it said it's like well one of the great things about this and this is it really is one of the powerful things that people that were used to be able to have the more robust version on the desktop uh and that's really no longer uh true that microsoft certainly is investing in cloud first and so you'll see uh, the new features that go for the cloud version first, and then they will, uh, at some point, there will be parity with the desktop. But there may be features that they go develop that are, 
you know, leverage the cloud and that just aren't possible in a desktop experience, not without an internet connection. If you think of anything of the, you know, the AI and, and machine learning related features, uh, the, kind of the intelligence of a lot of these uh, applications, you have to have the, the cloud connectivity. They just, those features just won't work uh, without yeah. the connection. That, a lot of business intelligence stuff too. Um, here is, um, so, um, so Andy has a question is project. This one is, uh, uh Sean for you is project cortex powered by the force. If so <laughs> light side or dark side. Oh, brother. It's these kinds of serious questions that, um, you know, these are serious questions. Yeah. I, I appreciate unfortunately, that. I don't, I don't know much about project cortex. I only know what um, McNulty's been peddling, and uh, yeah. that's not much. Sean, I think this might be a joke question, though. So uh, we'll just we'll hold it there, our answers, until we verify that. So, <laughs> uh, okay, here's a legitimate question. Thank you for nothing, Andy. Um, from Susie's asking, is Office 365 A1 a free or unlimited, uh, free license or unlimited for teachers and students? I don't know if I, I, I don't know on the licensing. I'm not a licensing expert. How are yeah. you in your head that you don't know uh, or are you saying no, no it's not? I, 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 I really don't know. Again, that, that's licensing and that's, that's a whole mystique unto itself. Yeah, for licensing, you have to have a graduate degree to understand it. <laughs> Um, specifically in product license licensing so. legal degree wouldn't hurt either yeah one of the most interesting conversations <laughs> or debates I witnessed was in a Microsoft office uh, three different groups trying to determine how to license a particular um, configuration and it was amazing the back and forth and it it is, it, it literally is like, like, like a lot of legal, uh, excuse me, legal stuff. So, well, so looking at the website around this, again, there is the, you know, so a one free, no commitment. I don't know what the gating factor is on that. You get the office apps, all the services. Um, I'm just looking to see. So you get, uh, outlook for the web and a 50 gigabyte mailbox. Um, so Teams, kind of, uh, all the, the products that come from that. Um, uh, reading through some of the small print. Uh, yeah, I'm not too familiar with the... You, you can connect that to if your work has uh, your exchange, you can connect that and leverage that. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I believe the answer is uh, yes. I don't know the limitations of that yes. But, you know, per what you're seeing, you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing there, Susie. Um, it, it, it should all be available. So I don't know if there's anybody else that has worked with in the education sector and can answer that question if we're incorrect on the A1 licenses. I'm just looking at other questions here. Oh, yeah, li licensing very, very much is. It's a, it's a different beast entirely. Yeah, so, exactly. Like, yeah, <laughs> so it's just almost unnerving having this big like, ball of fur sitting right there. Yeah. So. Be good to your Wookiee. Uh, uh, all right. Um, any other questions that you guys have run into? Anything happened in your day today? Uh, no. Okay. Probably the most eventful thing for us was uh, we put up security cameras. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I saw that people the giving you flack for that. Like, what are you doing? Are, are you one of these crazy people that, you know, yeah. thinks that the, uh, you know, you're, you're warding off an invasion here? Or? No, I'm, uh, we, I picked these up, uh, 
around Christmas time last year. And it was my intention to put them up last year, but I just got around to it um, now, <laughs> last weekend. And uh, we've got, I would say, I think we've got five cameras in the house. We've got five interior cameras and three exterior cameras. Um, and they work pretty well. Uh, they're yeah. blink, blink video. Yeah, it went out after you mentioned it this morning, went and looked at it. They're pretty reasonably priced and you're not yeah. suckered into some other plan around it. It's just basically all intact on your Wi-Fi and accessible through your phone. And Yeah, it really works well. Um, and in fact, the service is exposed so that you can get your videos out of it if you want. Um, Todd Clint was kind enough to float me some PowerShell that he had managed to obtain. And I'm trying to adapt that to build a Windows service right now so that I can offload the, uh, the videos uh, from the Amazon cloud to my own cloud. Keep track of things. Yeah, excellent. I'll make that available to anybody who wants it once I get it done. Dogs are out. They, they are. Yeah, did you see him run by? Yeah. Yeah, the, the little one likes to run around and around and around here, so you might see him. Just they, uh, they just went for a walk, so they're uh, riled up. <laughs> they're that ripped up, yeah. yeah. Night of All demon right. dogs. Um, all right, so we we still we've got uh, you know, quite a few folks that are out watching through the two streams. If you do have any questions, if you'd like us try to try and address, happy to to do that. Yeah, it's uh, so I'm kind of going through some of the other the old questions. Uh, mm -mm. Have either of you played with the Office deployment tool to upgrade Office? I have not. I have briefly. Uh, um, the to the extent that uh, I've used it um, to move between uh, release channels, yes. Uh, other than that, no. And I kind of quit using it for that when I discovered there's a a much cleaner, simpler, and easy way, or way easier way of doing it through the registry. Ah. Yeah, you can you can switch any channel you want by just sticking the appropriate value into the appropriate key in the registry. And, registry uh, hack. Huh? Save, so save save those as little reg edits, and basically you hit the reg edit, and you <clears throat> launch your office application. You need to tell it to do an update, and it will go from from. Uh, Monthly to uh, semi-annual to insider slow to insider fast on command. Hmm. It's it's cute. So is that just you know a single computer at a time, or are you able to do um, go in and, and script something up to upgrade five hundred computers at one time? Don't know. I never tried. I don't know five hundred computers. I only got just a couple. So I, but again, it's a registry edit. So I, you know, I assume that something like that would be deployable. Yeah, you can push that up through GPO or something, group policy object. Uh, let's see. Scrolling here. Um, still no official answer on Andy's question about Project Cortex. Um, let's see. I need to learn about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, there, there's a few statements. I don't, I don't mean to sound like uh, you know, like I'm not excited about it. It's uh, I know we've talked about it in the, the, the past. My my feeling on it is uh, it's, uh, you know, until there's something I can get my hands on, you know, what what's the 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 point of going and and uh, digging into it. Deeply, it's yeah. something that 
yeah, it's a, some pretty exciting stuff. Um, really, uh, for information management, knowledge management, uh, owners within an organization to be able to in, go in and automate and have AI driven, um, creating these kind of a, a wiki pages around important topics and projects. And, uh, I mean, just a lot of cool stuff that can be, you know, made possible. I'm really yeah. interested in understanding the curation process, uh, the management of that, and what that'll look like. Um, how much fine tuning and learning it needs to do before it really starts performing well. Yeah. Um, you know, little things like that, that, uh, again, they've got a very limited pilot right now. So if you, uh, are not reading much around project cortex, I mean, there's a, there's, there's a bunch of people talking about it. Uh, but I would argue most of those people have not seen it. <laughs> so I'm just kind of holding my, my breath waiting for that. So. Yeah. Switching between Office 365 for Business and Cider, on Cider Fast without reinstalling. Link is in the chat. Okay, let me add that. I see that. Add that in a couple locations here. Good find, Hal. Excellent. <laughs> the author's an old friend. Oh, really? Yep. All right. Well, while we're waiting uh, to see if there's any other product questions. Oh, sorry, Hal, you had comment? I'm just going to say howtooutlook.com. Uh, Robert Sparnage. Rowdy, he goes by in the answers forums. He is one of the few uh, Outlook MVPs remaining. Mm. It's down to like four of us now. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Robert, uh, Dmitry Stomchenko, um, Diane Perenshki, and me. Uh, no, there's a Basil, I think, oh, I forget what he's, Mikhail something. I, there's one more that's Russian, and that, 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 that's, that, that, that's it. Hmm. So you guys are the Alamo, uh, huh? His name. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, that's what makes it hard to find somebody. Like I go in and on the MVP page and search under Office Apps and Services for Outlook, and it pulls up 115 results. Uh, and so it's, you know, uh, and, unless they specifically add in to their profile, something like that, there's not even a place to, to do that in the profile anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is unfortunate. I mean, they, they're they're keeping it to the award categories. There should be the ability to, to add in like top three products or something. I don't, I don't know. Or as many as you want Yeah, well. to, to specialize just from a search standpoint. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was asking, like I was talking with a Microsoft person trying to identify, um, you know, who are the project, the Microsoft project MVPs. Cause I don't know any of them. Um, <laughs> So I joined the first first call and, you know, I, so I was able to identify five or six people from that, that call. Um, but only because they self-identified as, as project <laughs> MVPs. And uh, so there's otherwise, there's no way to really find that. So huh. that would be, I guess I could go into user voice and say, please update the MVP <laughs> profiles. That'll happen. <laughs> Project MVPs. Yep. So they're the same bucket as us, Office Apps mm -hmm. and Services. Well, that, yep. that applies to all of them, too. That's Excel, PowerPoint, right. any of it. Right. Know, name recognition will get you someplace if you're Bill Jellin or Stoda Steve Rinsberg or Diane Peremsky, but <laughs> that's about it. Uh, famous ice skaters is that who those were I don't yeah uh, no you know who they are uh, I, I could add now I could now add, add that Oz the Salil too yeah. hey I was going to ask the question the um, there, there is a, so I've got a, a, a blog post earlier this month there's an uh, 
an article I came across um, about a week and a half ago about uh, how much automation is too much automation. In what context? Exactly. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. I'm letting you self-define that. It's all ball, bear ball bearings these days. 220, 221, whatever it takes, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, I, I was kind of reflecting on um, how how much time do we spend trying to make our productivities to our productivity tools work, <laughs> and, and is that how we're spending most of our time adjusting knobs and toggles uh, to to get everything working right, uh, or are we actually leveraging that that technology? That was one of the I mean, something you know, Sean. I mean, you and I have talked about in the past in the SharePoint world, and it used to be. I mean, when I kind of got into the community space in uh, the end of two thousand nine, um, and so much of the conversation was on the Dev and IT Pro side of the technology, and most of the topics, most that you go to any event, anybody was presenting on SharePoint. All the discussions were about standing up your server and keeping your mm. your servers running and optimized, and yeah. so it, it became about it was nothing about actually using the software. <laughs> That's nope. Yeah, yeah. Maintaining the plumbing. Right, and uh, and so that was one of the big shifts with the move towards the cloud. Of you know, organizations where you no longer needed to have people were who were that you know dedicated to um keeping the infrastructure running and outsourcing more of that um and outsourcing that now a lot of folks just to microsoft uh, as part of microsoft 365 and which you know allows you then to go in and master the software itself and apply it to your business and so i mean in that context i mean how much automation is too much how much is too much? Hmm. Well, if it serves a purpose, I don't think it's too much. I mean, <laughs> it depends. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. It's the best answer to every question that's out there. Right? Yeah, I mean, I can only throw my hands up. Yeah. You've got to find the point at which something is um, doing what you want it to do and returns, you know, you get the return on investment you expect. Well, you know, if you're investing it, that's worth it. But how much do you put in above that? I don't know. You know, the problem with this, though, is it's, I think, uh, here's kind of a parallel story. So it's not about automation specifically, but um, since we're sitting here waiting for questions, we've got time for a story, right? Yeah, come on. Story uh, time. But uh, I, I use uh, a couple presentations that I, I, I give. I use the example of when I started, I went to work for Pacific Bell. And uh, my literally my day one uh, at Peck Bell, um, they handed me this massive three ring binder. Oh boy! And so one of the things I was taking on a bunch of processes, a bunch of ownership of somebody who was retiring at the end of that week. So I had one week of overlap with this guy, and a really nice guy, but he was slightly checked out. Um, and he, uh, yeah, they were like, uh, you know, leaving his job of 40 years. Um, he and his wife sold their house and were cashing out of the Bay area <laughs> and moving toward, towards kids like out of state somewhere. Anyway, wow. but, uh, so I go and ask a question. I, I I'd say, yeah, I'm trying to find this information and he kept responding. He's like, look, it's in the binder. And I'd go and I'd be digging through. And if I found what looked like what he was talking about and there'd be some uh, poorly 
organized process flow of something. I'd have tons of questions around that. I go back to him. He's like, yeah, it's, it's in the binder. I'm like, I've got the process flow. He's like, God, oh, there's other notes around that. I'm like, why are the notes not with the process diagram? That doesn't make it. Anyway, so I'm digging through. My, my point here is I, I spent uh, hours, a couple hours at least, trying to find some basic information, which he could have answered in about 10 minutes. And when I went back to him and was, and I was pissed off and he was upset. I kept asking him these questions and apparently it was in the binder. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, you know, I finally just kind of planted myself down and be like, dude, you got to answer it. You got to help me out. And he then uh, pointed to like, we went to the diagram, he's flipping through, went, jumped right to it. But then he started unloading on me just a bunch of other details around this process that weren't in the notes that weren't in the diagram. And so I'm sitting there writing on it. Um, so, uh, you know, my, my, the point, there's kind of two sides to this story, but the, uh, you know, one is the, the fact that a lot of the tacit knowledge and stuff is usually not documented. We suck as human beings at documentation. That's, that's one side. Um, the other side is that, I mean, at what point, like I waited way too long to not find the information I needed and then go force him to answer me in real time. Uh, and a lot of automation efforts, I think we spend far too long without looking at the trade-off of what are we really trying to automate here? Because the my, my philosophy on this is kind of the Deming philosophy of that sometimes the automation that's needed is a process, a shorter, sweeter, better one than what, what was there, or throwing out two of three processes and having one longer but you know, streamlined process versus three conflicting for different areas. Um, I just, I just don't think, uh, I know I'm waxing really philosophical here, but, um, you know, the, we spend so much time, you, you have to, uh, before you go in and try to build a solution for anything, have a solid understanding of what it is you're trying to accomplish. And I think that's where a lot of automation efforts, where we have a solution in search of a problem that we're trying to solve with a lot of those. <laughs> Understand your domain. Understand your domain, what you're trying to accomplish, and... Uh, it's very important. Yeah. So, anywho. Yeah. Storytelling time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Looking at that dumpster fire. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for those that didn't see it this morning, it's the... Yeah. 20 the dumpster fire yeah see what else i did my midday walk with the dogs and they barked at a uh there's a llama farm not too far from here so so much <laughs> llamas those llamas yeah brilliant so the, we got the the walking path along the river that's just behind the the pad and they're brilliant they set up a quarter uh coin operated um, food so you can go stick quarters in and get a cup of food and then feed their llamas nice like that that's nice go empty that once a week there's always yeah. people over there out here by picacho peak we got rooster cogburn's ostrich farm you can go out and feed the ostriches oh wow and lorikeets and i don't know it's a half dozen other different animals they've got out there that you can go feed Well, I'm just in Anderson Township, suburbia, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you city people. I would not call myself a city person. Uh, not at all. As I much have... as I love technology, I really prefer to be just out in the woods. Ooh. I'm scrolling down, looking to see any other open questions. Anything in the chat window? 
Yeah, nothing else. Yeah, so if you have any questions, things that have been, you've been pondering about Office 365, Microsoft 365, so feel free to task. Yeah, stump the chump. Oh, this one, was there an answer to this? Um, if you guys saw this question, somebody posted yesterday, um, the organization has a hybrid setup. There's no further details on what, um, oh, there is some, uh, there, I was gonna say, there's no other details on what flavor of hybrid they have, but uh, there are some, so. Um, okay. But they are, they say, he says we have, been having users randomly losing their team's calendars. Uh, we checked and it isn't anything to do with the team's calendar policies and overall Microsoft has it been helpful as to why it's happening. Any idea what to look into? Losing policies. So the question is it, uh, you know, like is it uh, sporadic with the same specific users? Is it sometimes working and it's just kind of, pervasive, sporadic, but pervasive across the entire organization. Um, That's definitely a more details needed. Um, yeah, I've not seen that specifically. Yeah, but the other part of that is that, you know, the flavor of hybrid. Um, so, uh, you know, where users' mailbox, mailboxes are hosted, is it hybrid? I'm assuming uh, exchange hybrid. So it's ex exchange on-prem with the hybrid connector. I'm not even assuming exchange. I mean, you say hybrid. Yeah, that's that. It, it, with Office 365, that's the most, in my experience, the most com common scenario is uh, exchange on-prem. You know, most people, when they refer to hybrid, uh, like in the SharePoint world, we would refer to, you know, there's a half a dozen different flavors of, of that with SharePoint that's out there. But um, most people just don't look at it that way. The, the, probably the, uh, the most difficult, I think it's, it's typical, I think the average SharePoint customer has 2.5 versions of SharePoint out there. So it's SharePoint online and you know, one or two other versions of SharePoint on prep. Yeah. Um, it's, it could be anything. I don't like to make assumptions. Yeah. It looks like this is a uh, ongoing, um, yeah, so they got some advice on, because I, I would advise the same thing as look at the version of Exchange, the on-prem Exchange, make sure that it's the, you know, one of the latest versions there, make sure that it's, um, there's not a conflict with the, when you have more points of failure with, uh, with a system like this, um, you know, check the version of Exchange, number one, um, like make sure that that connector um, you know, reinstall pieces, make sure that the, you know, that, that connection is, is clean on that updated version, make sure, um, you know, any updates are applied to that on-prem exchange. Um, but I would start there. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I know that there are just going to be uh, nuances to based on what version of Exchange that you have. And so it's best to uh, upgrade that to the latest on-prem version. All right, uh, scroll back up, see if any other new questions have come in. Um, no, just... Andy making other Star Wars jokes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> What's wrong with Star Wars jokes? Uh, I don't know. Uh, are you watching any of the, were you uh, ever a fan of like the Clone War stuff? Actually watching that now. I just saw it in the, like the news today about the 
final scene of uh, the latest season of Clone Wars with uh, Darth Vader. And uh, yeah, it, it was a, a, enough that I've I realized I haven't watched most of that. My, my boys were into that, but I'm a Lord of the Rings guy. Not so much as Star Wars. So. I had to have the Mandalorian. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. I said I had to have the Mandalorian. So, yeah, no, the Mandalorian was good. Not a big fan of the music for that show, but it was uh, hot or cold on the, the the music. But the the show itself, I thought, was fantastic. So, I haven't actually seen that. You haven't seen the Mandalorian yet. Ooh. No, sir. And why is that? Baby Yoda. I've, I've seen Baby Yoda on the interwebs. Yeah. Well, that's, but uh, that's the only play that I've, I've seen. That is from when came. Yeah, ba- Baby Yoda's cutesy and stuff, but it's actually a really, really cool storyline. It's the you know, spaghetti western styling. And this is, they did a really good job on it. So John Favreau it's my kudos. It's it's a great story. I, I it sucks that we have to wait so long for season two. Yeah, I agree with you there. But yeah, uh, definitely go check that out hmm. if you can be bothered with it. Yeah, you should go <laughs> check that out. Normally, I'm just a movie guy. Yeah, no, nah, it's it, it, it's it's good, especially with them all out. You know, and being able to just kind of go you know, from beginning to end of, of season one, I, it, it'll be worth your while to see it. So they did a good job, except with the music. So what's the deal with the music? Uh, it, it's all right, most of it. So they, it's, it's not John Williams, and they were trying to go, so they were trying to do that kind of, you know, uh, spaghetti Western type thing, but with a modern space age kind of feel. <laughs> And also to try and make it so it, it it feels more like a they get a high school band or something to do. Oh no no it's 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 not that it's not that but it's um yeah just sometimes it's just so corny sappy it doesn't have the I, I get what they're trying to do and make it you know by having it a little more sometimes a little more light light hearted but uh, you know modern but still have that kind of western feel to it. Okay. Um, it just, it, it, it misses big time. Like there's one scene where he's on this planet, he's with, he's made this friend, this little guy, um, and they're going out to find, uh, you know, track of the, those that, uh, kidnapped baby Yoda and they're on these pig lizard, which is a complete ripoff of galaxy quest, by the way, <laughs> and, but they're riding out over the, the desert terrain mm. And the music that plays at that moment, it's just awful. It's just awful. And uh, it, did, uh, in my view, detracts from the show. And it's not all the time. It's, it's really only a handful of episodes where it's enough that, you know, my, you know, a little bit of bleeding in the ears from it. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, I, I think I'm the only person that, that's making a, a big deal about it. But it, it, Sean, as you know, I'm, big on music and oh yeah it bothers me so So who who did the music for it are you asking me to go and google something for you sean (laughs) yes (laughs) christian right i'll I'll look that for me just for you who i thought it might be at the tip of your tongue but no Yeah, it, I, I know what I, I, I uh, here it is. It's uh, uh, Ludwig Goransson. Aren't you glad you knew that now? <laughs> so he's he's won Oscars and Grammys, and uh, he's, he did it, and uh, I don't care. I, I, I'm not <laughs> impressed by it. So suck it, Oscar and Grammy yeah. winner. He's yeah. No, I, I, again, a, a lot of it, it is, re- it's pretty good and it's very fitting. It just, sometimes it just, he goes off and it, it's almost like a, um, like a, a 70s sitcom type thing. It just, uh, uh, too much. Yeah. 
All right. Did you not see my uh, my post the other day about, uh, you know, let me Google that for you. Says, uh, what is it? Let me Google that for you is the modern day equivalent to have you tried turning it off and on again. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. Yep. Uh, let's see. No other questions posted. People are being shy today. Kind of handful of uh, of people watching. About a dozen people watching. Things can't be going that well. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it can't be. Everyone's got um, something going on. Yeah. What else is going on? We've got a lot of huge events that are coming up. Um, we've got uh, GlobalCon 2 uh, oh. happening. So uh, a lot of Teams-related stuff. You've got the Commsverse thing happening. When is that? Commsverse is... Commsverse? Yeah, it is. Uh, so another, they're all free. Uh, you've got Build this month. Build. You yes. guys registered for that? Yep. Well, yes and no. I did not. It's free. Why would you not register? I didn't know it was free. You could you can register and have that playing while the Mandalorian is playing. Kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> yeah, what I've got to do is re-register because it it asks you, and they've been doing that a lot. Uh, you know, if you want the, a Microsoft account or a working school account or whatever, when you want to register, and if you happen to have been using one of your user accounts in this case it's my outlook.com because i was in doing some stuff that i needed that for which just the last thing the browser had in its cache you know and i go clicking on through everything and i get an email through through my main email at live.com saying oh by the way you're registered at the outlook.com and it's like oh no that's not what i wanted for christ's yeah. sakes that's how microsoft so I went teams back on is oh, right. yeah, microsoft I went back teams on is a the tech community is like that. Yeah. yeah. I thought so the I canceled the registration. I canceled it. Figured, yeah, okay, I'll cancel it. I can go back in. I mean, no. Now it thinks because I used my, my live account as the, the, the response address for the first login that I've canceled, it can't use that one again. So yeah. I, I wish they would ask to start with live account. Which one? So riddle, riddle me this. What is the point of build if it's virtual? What is the point of inspire if it's virtual or of ignite? I, I mean, I seem to recall most people going to build. It was about getting some hardware out of that. Wasn't there a focus on hardware? Uh, um, well, yeah, it's all the all the developer stuff, and so it's very hardware centric. But like getting a device, getting something out of it, having never attended, I don't know. Yeah, me either. Yeah. Have you been to Expire? That's another one I haven't been to. Uh, I went to the last ten. This was going to be my eleventh year in a row. Ah. Uh, yeah. And you, good. You were to Tech Ed slash Ignite. How did they compare? Many. Uh, it, it's essentially the same thing. Uh, yeah, I've been okay. to, like you mentioned this morning, I, I've been to, I don't know how many tech eds, four or five in the US, two or three international ones. So I've been in Australia, New Zealand, and uh, yeah, some of the European ones, like the last one I was at, the last one that was held in Berlin. Um, so it was a while back of tech ed. That was, uh, that was one of my favorites for tech ed. Yeah. Uh, I went tech to Tech Ed, Ed back in 2000. Wow. Ancient history, Tech Ed. <laughs> like yeah. it was down in New Orleans. and uh, Was that the one Duran Duran played at? Or was that, that was Inspire in New Orleans. Anyway, the partner <laughs> conference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I seem to recall uh, Steve Winwood playing at one of them. Wow. Yeah. Cheapers. <laughs> I haven't gone to tech ed since then. 
He's that higher love guy, right? Yeah, he is. I hated that song. Bring me as a teenager. Love. Yeah. It was yeah. too top top too top forty for me. Mm. <laughs> for those that don't know, so my my music taste, I'm pretty particular. Yeah. <laughs> it's not angry enough. It's a lot within it. Yeah, no, there's certain certain things that I, I like, but yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, though that with uh, that that going on, it's um, yeah. We were talking about that this morning as well. It's uh, you know what's what is the value of build um, besides like the you know the swag or whatever they they gave you other hardware and stuff around that. Yeah, it's the the big question about if we see a major shift and these online events. You know, they the, the hard part to this is that they need to figure out how people are going to interact. Um, to how are we going to make connections and have side conversations around that? Um, the least interesting thing about most of these events is the content, the sessions. Yeah. It's the, the value is in the networking. Uh, People want to get together. Yeah. 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 But uh, no, yeah, I was going to say the other, good. yeah, mm-hmm. the other, the online stuff coming up though. So we have, so the SharePoint conference is uh, pushed back to next year, the physical conference, uh, but they're, they combined with the, uh, the community folks in the West Coast that helped put on a couple of the SoCal um, SharePoint Saturday events. So uh, Joel and, and Dave and team, and, and so they're doing, what is it called again? Uh, I don't have it open in front of me. Virtual SPC or something. It's the, yeah, uh, the... Uh, but anyway, so that event is going on. You're going to see a lot more press around that. That's happening at the end of this month. That's the 26th and 27th or 27th and 28th. Yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. It is the 27th and 28th, Wednesday and Thursday. Microsoft 365 Virtual Marathon. The Virtual Marathon. Thank you. So that's going on uh, this month. You've got – so build the the marathon happening after that. You have then GlobalCon 2 happening in uh, early June. And then this commsverse is happening, it's all, which is all teams focused, uh, is happening in July. And so all of these events, you go in and if, you're, if you miss one, don't worry. There's like half a dozen more there's, back to back to back to back. Galactic Collaboration Summit. And there's the Galactic Collaboration Summit, which is the online version of the uh, European Collab Summit, which got pushed back to, what are they, September, October? Uh, I believe September. Yeah. Yeah, I was supposed to, uh, I was presenting there in June, and I don't know if I'm going to make it for the fall. Uh, There's just a a lot going on. But a lot of opportunities. Rackley punted back to uh, the end of uh, September as well. Okay, yeah, I remember his. So that's still, if you are uh, salivating for an uh, in-person event, so you have that North American Collab Summit that's happening in, um, what's it, to Branson, Missouri? Yes, sir. And it's a great location. It's a fantastic location. It's a neat place. Unless you're in the Western U S and have to fly to Missouri from the West, it's a little bit easier to get there from the East. It's like a 10 and a half hour drive for me. That's all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a long time in the car. Uh, yeah. I know. Hey, you're talking to somebody. I, do, I would drive I do it, to the Seattle summit from here. That was 14 <laughs> hours. So. I do it for Mark because I love him. I've always supported Mark and I will continue to support Mark until the day he dies. It's a great event. Um, I think they're for, for the, it's a great location out in the middle of the country. If you're looking for a place, I mean, to go to a public event and be, you know, sequestered into a spot where it's, you're away from the massive cities. It's yeah. a good place to be. Branson has zip lining <laughs> and all sorts of stuff. It's like Vegas, old Vegas, kind of. No, no, it was, it was, you know what it was like? Cause I got there in the evening and nobody was really down in the, what the, the walkway down at the restaurants and stores. It's kind of mm-hmm. closed, but the music was being piped through it. It's like, it's like, it felt like 
end of the day at Disneyland, just as they're trying to shuffle everybody out as they close. The music is going. You smell popcorn and something sweet in the air. And then it is a, really nice. You know, then there's a bass fishing store. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, Lots of good stuff. It's a good, it's a great event. So, in fact, where did I put it? Oh, oh my! Uh, I was wearing the hat all day. Oh, I left it upstairs. It's an underserved community. Yeah. Yeah, definitely go take a look at that. But otherwise, you have a lot of online options available to you. Um, and then, of course, uh, we will continue uh, for as long as uh, this quarantine period is, is underway somewhere in the world. We yep. will be here every Monday. <laughs> you know. We will. Most likely. Indeed. Probably. <laughs> uh, all right. Playing, playing Team Fortress 2. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I we'll we'll see. I got some stuff to do this evening, whether that'll happen or not. But it has been fun. I've had uh, so two of my boys uh, jumping on as a party. We were talking about this last week, and you know, I'd go in, and it's it's different when you've got you know friends in on uh, games like that and going kind of gang up. Oh yeah, so. makes all the difference. Yeah, if people that don't know what we're talking about, Team Fortress Two, TF Two, it's a lot of fun. TF2. Available out on Steam. Yep. Get on the Discord channel. Get your uh, game up. Yeah, I need Microsoft to buy Steam so I can get a dual MVP in Steam, <laughs> Steam and then Office apps and services. Wow, that would be incredible. <laughs> We're talking the stuff of dreams here. Yeah. Stardust. You know, one of the coolest things, I, I think we've talked about this in the past, maybe not part of this, but I went to a... Um, an event where a couple, it was around uh, virtual and augmented reality. And there was mm -hmm. a bunch of, uh, so as part of there's, so Utah has a ton of FinTech and blockchain and AR VR vendors. Those three areas, you look at the makeup of the startups and they're heavily in those three areas and uh, mostly in FinTech number one, big number one. Uh, but I, so I went to this thing, you had uh, two or three companies that were kind of showcasing their products and one of them had an uh, educational services solution, uh, a, a VR solution. So it was true, you know, VR going to build a like virtual classroom, you're sitting in an auditorium. And so demonstrating this whole thing, you got to go down and do it and walk around with it. And ha they had somebody who was across town, the other side of Salt Lake City that was uh, presenting some things. And uh, so one of the questions I said, look, one, I, I was there with uh, Noah Sparks, who is, of course, very uh, bullish on VR, AR technology, just very passionate about that stuff. And, and I'm just like, you know, I, I, I think it's so far off from being, you know, usable technology for most of us. And, uh, and he was the, the, the owner of this one, this company that demoed this technology is says so actually this is we're out we're selling it we're doing it we're making money today off this it's a profitable product here's what we, we do and i'm like okay yeah but i have to have all the gear to be able to do it he's like for the 3d experience yeah you have to have the device but they have it everything works in a 2d environment um and so with your mouse and keyboard and looking at your 2d screen and going into these environments and being able to access resources do everything you could do all of that today you don't need to have any of that it's enhanced by the rest of that experience and he used the example of in his demo uh in like a lecture that was pre-recorded so the professor's just you go stand and walk around the professor while the professor's talking it was a pre-recorded vr experience but the demo was of uh like looking at and uh dissecting a human heart mm. and, and so it was animated around that so going up this thing and having it beat and stuff and then it you know splits apart and they're talking about the different and building all of that um it's pretty incredible to have yeah. that kind of in-depth experience but i'm like what does it cost to do this he's like yeah it costs five dollars on steam I'm like so i could pay five dollars download one of your templates 
add in my 2D content, because obviously building a 3D model of a heart, you know, there's some work that's involved with that. Um, so. You know, prob probably some PowerShell that'll do it. Brian Jacket will tell <laughs> claim PowerShell can do it. <laughs> but uh, um, PowerShell makes him a better person, Sean. Uh, mm -hmm. But the uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, but it, but five bucks, that's it. To go in and to get access to a bunch of out-of-the-box templates, add all of your content into it, record yourself narrating through this stuff, and make it available to the world where anybody that has Steam can go and consume that training material. Yeah. It, it's pretty, I didn't realize that you know, it was at that point. And so I was pretty, pretty cool. impressed by that. Yeah. Training. It's come and, a long way. I mean, uh, people still say they're looking for the killer app. VR needs a killer app, but um, it has made quite a bit of progress, and there's a lot you can do with it. Okay. So I know we talked about this. I want to say we were out in Seattle. Um, you were we talking about your microphone. the summit last year? I think it was the SharePoint Fest. You and I, you okay. had your... Yeah. your like oh, that's right. Around with somebody. That's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It was SharePoint Fest, Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. And we were talking about it. And uh, it was back in those days when we used to go to events. <laughs> Whatever happened to that? <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's some cool stuff. But, um, you yeah, know, obviously, I'm, I'm uh, it, it, it's not a surprise that the games, the gaming world went there first. Yeah. There's another industry that's rapidly trying to go and now has offerings into it. We won't discuss that, but, uh, true. And it pushes the boundaries of technology. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, we are, uh, we are out of time. Uh, and so, uh, thank you to, uh, Sean and Hal for joining It was a quieter evening here, but we'll be back again next week. Yep. And we're so close on getting the teams up and running. Man, OBS is a pain in the butt. It'll be, you'll get there. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll get there. It was working. Well, yeah, it, it's working as long as I, you know, except with teams getting the video to work properly. Right. So we'll get there though. So um, anyway, well, so yeah, just watch for that change, both of you, that could happen for next week where I'll resend the invite out for the teams for the panel. Gotcha. Cool. So. All right. Well, thanks everybody, and uh, we'll have the uh, the recording will be up in the next day, and I'll also have the summary with jump links to each of the topics covered, and that'll be posted out to uh, the Collab Talk YouTube page, and so you can find it YouTube slash C slash Collab Talk, and of course I'll post uh, the recording once it's available in the blog post uh, up within my page as well as in the Office 365 community. And with that, thanks for putting this together. Yep. Yes. Thanks a lot for joining. And uh, hold your questions till next week. <laughs> All right. Peace out, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Take care.